Good evening, everybody. I would like to call to order the regular meeting of the James City County Planning Commission. It is June 1st, 2022, 6 p.m. Mr. Holt, we call the roll, please. Mr. Rogers. Here. Mr. Rogers represents the Berkeley District. Ms. Null. Present. Ms. Null represents the Stonehouse District. Mr. Rose. Here. Mr. Rose represents the Roberts District. Mr. Polster. Here. Mr. Polster represents the Jamestown District and is vice chair to the commission. Mr. Haldeman. Here. Mr. Haldeman is an at-large member. Mr. Croft. Here. Mr. Croft represents the Powhatan District and Mr. O'Connor. Here. Mr. O'Connor is an at-large member and is chair of the planning commission. I'm Paul Holt, director of community development and planning for the county. Sitting to my left this evening is Mr. Adam Kinsman, our county attorney. It's my pleasure to be secretary of the commission. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Holt. First item on our agenda this evening is public comment. This time's reserved for folks who would like to address the Planning Commission uh, about anything that is not relevant to our public hearings. If you're here to speak for a public hearing tonight, we'll do that as, as part of the, the case presentation later. Is there anybody that wishes to address during public comment? Seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to reports of the commission. Uh, Mr. Polster, anything for policy? Or I guess, I'm sorry, it's Mr. Haldeman now. I apologize. <laughs> None necessary. Uh, the policy committee did not meet in May, Mr. Chairman. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, Development Review Committee. Any report, Ms. Null? I do. And this is um, the April 20th meeting. The meeting was called to order at 4 p.m. on April 20th, 2022. Present, Barbara Null Chair, Frank Polster, Stephen Rogers, and Rob Rose. Also in attendance, Jack Haldeman. Staff in attendance for Josh Crump, Principal Planner, John Reisinger Planner, Thomas Weissong, Senior Planner, Katie Pelletier, Community Development Assistance. Case number C-22-0019, 7607, Richmond Road, Oakland Farm Residential Rezoning was before the Commission for feedback on the proposed development. Mr. Reisinger stated that Mr. John Greer from Plus Management Commercial Real Estate has submitted a conceptual plan for a proposed residential development located at 7607 Richmond Road. He said the parcel is currently zoned A1 General Agriculture and is designated low density residential on the two. 2045 comprehensive plan use map. Mr. Reisinger said the parcel is inside the primary service area and is approximately 95 acres in size. He noted the proposed development would have a density of 2.5 to 3 units per acre with a mixture of single family and multifamily units. Mr. Reisinger said the comprehensive plan recommends a gross density of 1 to 4 units per acre in the LDR areas if particular public benefits are provided. He noted that single family and multifamily units are recommended uses in the LDR areas. Mr. Reisinger stated that this item is on the committee's agenda to have a high level discussion of the project before starting detailed design work. He said no action by the DRC is required. Mr. Greer stated that he appreciated the opportunity to meet with the committee to get feedback on design principles and acceptable density range of the proposed development. He said the estate owner contacted him to help understand the land use designation change from moderate de density residential to LDR during the recent comprehensive plan update. He said the estate needs to sell and was looking for advice on the property. He said he grew up appreciating design with nature developments such as Kings Mill and supports the slow growth mindset. Mr. Greer displayed an initial civil engineer drawing of what he said could be developed on the property. He noted that with the approved apartments next door, it is an emergency growth area, but with a rural context. Mr. Greer said if the comprehensive plan acknowledges the need to account for growth in the area, then a development plan should still try to account for the history and the layout of the property. Mr. Greer said that the intent by the estate, however, was always to have higher density in the front. He said there is a possibility to do a traditional neighborhood development or village influence design on the property, but he thought that would squeeze existing residents into a more urban setting. He said a different approach would consider the layout of the fields and clusters of specimen trees and preserve the rural character along Route 60 and the roadway procession to the existing community. 
Mr. Greer then showed the community f the committee photos of the existing property trees and road procession to the Oakland subdivision. He showed an alternative design for the development which incorporates the existing Oakland Drive and tree clusters. He asked the committee for their feedback on the best density range. Mr. Polster said he's, interest, he's concerned about the impacts of the proposed density of 270 new units, in addition to the 126 approved apartment units and the existing 40 to 50 homes in the back. He stressed that there is traffic mitigation concerns for the Richmond Road and Croker Road corridors. Mr. Polster also stated that any new design should fit the aesthetics of the planning, landscaping, roadways, and bikeways of the apartment development. Mr. Polster said he envisioned R1, limited residential zoning for the property, but suggested the applicant consider the impacts and what design guidelines, benefits, or proffers may be proposed to offset another proposed zoning. It was noted that the Board of Supervisors has already received comments on the proposal from concerned citizens. I, ex I expressed concern about the proposal density, the traffic impacts, and the possible requirements for additional schools. Mr. Greer asked what would be conserved, considered preservation of rural character. Mr. Polster suggested limiting zoning to R1, limited residential with one acre lot density and a cap on traffic impacts to keep the same level of service. Mr. Crump suggested looking at the net developable area when considering density. Mr. Rose commented the existing community will likely be concerned with the new development and fencing. Mr. Haldeman asked about the driveways for proposed lots near the entrance. Mr. Greer replied that they would likely use a slip road. Mr. Reisinger noted that lots cannot front on existing roads within a major subdivision. He also noted that there may be options in each zoning district for smaller lots to allow for more open space if a gross density is met and depending on water and sewer service. He also noted the cluster overlay is available in R1 and R2 zoning districts, but the R1 zoning district does not allow multifamily housing. Mr. Polster suggested exploring the idea of rural clustering with staff. Mr. Greer mentioned the concept of rural hamlets in Loudoun County, Virginia. Mr. Polster also noted that extended resource protection area buffers could be considered a public benefit. He said trails could also be located in the area. Mr. Greer asked if keeping the existing Oakland Drive layout is the right solution. Mr. Polster replied that it would depend on the settings and what development is proposed with it. He said most important would be the density, traffic, and aesthetics. The meeting was adjourned at 5 o'clock. Thank you, Ms. Noll. Any questions? Seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Uh, only item on our consent agenda this evening are minutes of the April 6, 2022 regular meeting. Can I get a motion to approve for amendments? So moved. So we have a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Our first public hearing this evening, SUP-2022. I'm sorry, SUP-22-0003-7683 Richmond Road, Kettle Corn Food Processing and Storage. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission. Mr. David Tefty, property and business owner, has applied for a special use permit on behalf of Uncle Dave's Kettle Corn to change the existing contractor's office and warehouse use at 7683 Richmond Road to allow the use of the property for food processing and storage. The property is zoned A1 General Agriculture, designated low density residential, and lies within the primary service area. This property consists of approximately 1.95 acres with 5,360 square feet of building space. Inside, the building is divided by use in the following categories. Administrative purposes, storage of inventory, repair and restoration of kettles, and finally to process, package, and distribute kettle corn and pork rinds. Previously, the warehouse space was used to hold contractor trucks and equipment. Staff has provided conditions to reduce impacts to the adjacent residential properties. These conditions include limitations on hours of operation, prohibiting outdoor storage, screening all dumpster and HVAC units, 
and limiting the preparation, heating, or processing of kettle corn and pork rinds to a fully enclosed building utilizing an activated carbon filtration system. Staff finds this proposal to be compatible with surrounding development and consistent with the James City County 2045 Comprehensive Plan and Zoning Ordinance. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval of this application to the Board of Supervisors subject to the proposed conditions. Thank you for your time this evening. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. In addition, the applicant is available to you as well. Thank you, Ms. Yates, and I apologize. Welcome, welcome aboard, and nice to see you. So thanks. Thank um, you. Any questions? Mr. Alderman? Uh, my understanding is there's no change to the footprint in the buildings. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Yates? The only question I had, in, unless it's covered elsewhere, is I saw in the materials that there's commercial buildings to the one side of the of this existing structure, but there's a, a residence to the other side. Is there any kind of outreach, or do we know what that resident thinks about what's going on next? Um, well, store? adjacent, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, their letters have been um, sent out to adjacent property owners, and they were given um, a certain amount of time to be able to respond accordingly if there were any misgivings or celebrations. And so no, nothing, nothing came back came, then? Nothing's come back. Any other questions? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. This time I will open the public hearing, and the speaker card I have is Mr. Tufte, 1928 Forge Road. Dave Tufte, owner of Uncle Dave's Kettle Corn. And the sole purpose, reason we're here is we have simply been blessed, and we've run out of room. Um, we service four hospitals in Richmond on occasion. They uh, do employee appreciation days, and sometimes they order 2,000 at a time. And we make everything at the premium outlets. We simply have run out of room, and it's a real stress to the staff because we have to make it all there, and then we haul it to the shop, and then we haul it out of there to the hospitals, okay? So <clears throat> it is not our intent to sell anything there. It is, it is only our intent to make it there on occasion, maybe once a week, maybe once a month. Um, it's, just, it's just the over, overage that we're trying to absorb and, and make our situation a little less stressful, okay? So that's it in the nutshell. Um, any questions? Questions? Dr. Rose? We have a couple questions. Thank you uh, for coming. It, in the application, it said you're going to mitigate the smell that comes out of the production of the kettle corn. Is there any additional noise that would be part of the production that would happen after hours or on the weekends? No. No, no I mean, we're literally making popcorn, and all the walls are insulated. Okay. I mean, there's no noise. Okay. Yeah. And did you bring any for us to try? I'm sorry? Did you bring any, samples? Did you bring any for us to try? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> She said that would be a bribe. That was, <laughs> that was all my questions. So. Any other questions? It's really just on the same vein I was asking before, and, and I'm just curious about the, the carbon filters or whatever in terms of, are these filters you've used before? No, and I actually challenge that, okay? Um, we've been at the premium outlets for 18 years, never used a carbon filter. Matter of fact, I talked to my neighbor last week because I wanted to get his take if he was for us or against us. Charlie's Antiques is on one side, and then we have one neighbor. And he said, no, I wish you'd make perfume out of that. <laughs> he said, I love the smell. But, of course, he can only vaguely smell it if the wind is blowing the right direction. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's, it's really not an issue. And that's why I char challenged the carbon filter, but as they explained... Um, if there become new neighbors or different neighbors and they don't like the smell of kettle corn, then the carbon filter would mitigate that. So we're willing to do whatever we need to do. Anything else? 
Oh, I wanted to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I already told you. Never mind. About the neighbor. He's, he's for it. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Tufty. Appreciate it. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this application? If not, I will close the public hearing and turn it over for discussion. I, I would simply say that I live in Tawana Woods and never smell anything. So, um, you know, it's it, it's not uh, intrusive in any Evan stretch of the imagination. I'm sorry? You haven't started making it. So, you would have to live at the prime outlook. <laughs> <laughs> can you can we come up here so we can get you on the mic and that's okay it's hard to do minutes when we can't hear you <laughs> we repair the kettles okay we have to test them and oftentimes we'll just roll them outside put them under our tent make a batch okay make sure it's firing properly at the right temperature and so forth and that's it thank you mr crop um, the only comment I've, I have is it's always gratifying to see a local business uh, be successful and have to expand, and so uh, I support the application and would make a motion for approval subject to the proposed conditions. Second. So we have a motion to approve. Mr. Holt, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Croft. Aye. Mr. Haldeman. Aye. Mr. Polster. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Ms. Noll. Aye. Mr. Rogers. Aye. And Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. Our second public hearing tonight, SUP 22-0004-4451 Long Hill Road Life Church Daycare Program SUP amendment. So, Ms. Costello, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Ms. Carla Javier of Child Development Resources, also known as CDR, has applied to amend a previously approved special use permit for a daycare located at 4451 Long Hill Road. This is the current location of Life Church. The property is zoned R8 rural residential and designated low density residential and is located inside the primary service area. Surrounding development includes Windsor Forest, Seasons Trace, and Lafayette High School. The Christian Life Center, also known as Life Church, has occupied this facility since March of 2000. In March of 2020, a special use permit was approved for the church to bring the church into conformance with the zoning ordinance and for a daycare for up to 30 children. Due to COVID and other issues, the program never began. In lieu of the church operating a daycare program, the Head Start program operated by CDR will be moving into this location. Currently, this program is operating at Lafayette High School, which is located at 4460 Long Hill Road. CDR is proposing to have a maximum of 32 children with the operating hours of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The SGP before you tonight will amend the previous one approved in 2020. The changes proposed are increasing the maximum number of children from 30 to 32, expanding the hours of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. In the previously approved SGP, the hours were 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And we also added a condition that mitigates noise since there is an outdoor play area proposed with this application. Staff finds this proposal to be compatible with surrounding development and consistent with the 2045 Comprehensive Plan and Zoning Ordinance. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval to the Board of Supervisors with the proposed conditions. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have, and the applicant is also available. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Costello. Any questions? Good night. Thank you. At this point, I will open the public hearing and no speaker cards. Did you all want to say, or do you have any questions for the applicant? I'll have to, yeah. <laughs> Enough. Anybody else wish to speak on this application? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and turn it over for discussion. Mr. Chairman, I recommend. Uh, or I um, move that we recommend <coughs> approval of SUP 22-0004 with attached conditions. I have a second? Second. second. So we have a motion. 
And will you call the roll, please? Mr. Krupp. Aye. Mr. Haldeman. Aye. Mr. Polster. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. Ms. Null. Aye. Mr. Rogers. Aye. And Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Great. Thank you very much. We have no planning commission considerations this evening, and it is, Mr. Holt, your time for the planning director's report. It is. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Good evening. So I will highlight for you, we've got an open, uh, an open house coming up as our next public engagement opportunity for our natural and cultural assets mapping exercise. Um, included a flyer, included in your agenda packets tonight will be Wednesday. June 29th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the County Rec Center there on Long Hill Road. Um, community members are invited to attend an open house event to view our natural and cultural assets maps and comment on strategies to restore and protect those areas, those significant areas of the county. So arrive anytime between 4 and 7. Stay as long or as little as you like. We will be doing a formal presentation, but uh, from 5 to 5.30. But everybody is welcome. And with that, I'm glad to take any questions, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for Mr. Holt? Wow, easy night for you, too. So, <laughs> oh. so, uh, moving on, we are at Planning Commission discussions and requests. Anybody have anything? Oh, subdued group. It is. So. Mr. Alderman told me I had 16 minutes and I'm in trouble, so it's... Uh... <laughs> and the AC just kicked on, too. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so at this point, I will uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you. Yay. Thank you.